today I'm going to be duping the Watermelon Glow PHA and BHA Toner by Glow Recipe. I asked you guys on Instagram if I should make mine pink just like theirs and it was a tie. So I ended up not making mine pink, but uh, I'll still show you guys how to make it pink. This toner has a blend of PHA and BHA, so it does help gently exfoliate the skin. It can help minimize the appearance of pores and overall just make the skin nice and glowy. Also, my cat wants to say hi, apparently. The ingredient list down here, I'm not gonna go through it all individually because there are so many ingredients in this, but I will let you know that the BHA is not salicylic acid, it's actually betaine salicylate, which is a more gentle alternative to salicylic acid. It also has gluconolactone, I'm not sure if I said that correct, but that is the PHA, and that is a gentle exfoliant that I have noticed is really popular in Korean skincare. There is also a blend of a bunch of different botanical extracts along with watermelon, of course. There's also a blend of humectants like glycerin, hyaluronic acid, and sodium polyglutamate. Also, let me just point out that they have vetiviver oil in their toner. And what I do every time I dupe a product, I go to whatsinmyjar.com and I check out what they have to say about the product. If you scroll to the bottom, they have the whole ingredient list. And as you can see, it's actually different than what's on their website. It doesn't mention vetiviver oil. I don't know if maybe they changed their formula over time and this is like an old formula or maybe this is just wrong on whatsmyjar.com. But this was the ingredient list I initially looked at when I wrote the formula. So that's actually why I didn't end up incorporating a few extracts like strawberry, blueberry, vetiviver, and also rose water because those weren't listed on whatsmyjar.com. So I don't know what happened there. That was my mistake. Either way, I still think you guys are gonna love this product and I will have everything you need, equipment, ingredients, everything linked in the description box. Also on Patreon, I will have a blog with a PDF file you can print out with directions and an Excel spreadsheet so you can change this formula to whatever batch size you want. So let's get into it. We're making a 300 gram batch and we're starting with phase A. We are first going to combine the glycerin in the ultra low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. This helps disperse the hyaluronic acid into the product easier. It hydrates it. So I always recommend mixing your hyaluronic acid powder with a humectant like glycerin, propendiol or propylene glycol first before adding it into the water. So that's what we're doing here. You could use a different molecular weight hyaluronic acid that is higher, but it will increase the viscosity of your product. So your toner will be have a little bit of thickness to it and that's okay. Some people might like that. Moving on, we're grabbing a, another beaker. This is phase B. I'm using 228.9 grams of distilled water. You could use rose water here or any other hydrosol if you would like. Then 15 grams of tea tree hydrosol. Since I couldn't find tea tree extract, I figured this is perfect alternative. Then I'm adding in six grams of watermelon extract. I did 2% of this extract since this is like the main extract in the product. And then the rest, I just did 1%. So we did three grams of prickly pear extract three grams of willow bark extract, three grams of licorice root extract, and three grams of skull cap extract, three grams of sweet potato extract, along with three grams of cucumber extract. And again, you don't need all these extracts, just pick a couple you want. I try to just get as many as I could find that is in their toner. I did three grams of sugar cane extract, and Lastly, three grams of hibiscus extract. Then I'm gonna be adding in the preservative. I'm using 1.5 grams of Liquid Dermal Plus. You can use a different water soluble preservative, but if it's something like Optifin Plus, you will probably need to mix it with a solubilizer like polysorbate 80 or polysorbate 20 before adding it in. A lot of preservatives that are water soluble still have issues mixing into watery solutions like this. So just keep that in mind. Now I'm gonna add in the powdered ingredients. So I'm doing six grams of the betaine salicylate on formulatorsampleshop.com. This is called beet SA powder. So it might be under a different name, but that's the INCI name. And this is the salicylic acid alternative. Then we're adding in six grams of gluconolactone. This is the PHA. And PHAs are more gentle than AHAs or BHAs, and they're really popular in Korean skincare, at least from what I've noticed. And then lastly, 
0.3 grams of sodium polyglutamate. And this is a humectant and this will help hydrate your skin. This powder is actually the hardest to get to dissolve. All the other ones dissolve really easy, but just mix it periodically until everything's dissolved and everything should be clear in the end. You shouldn't have a cloudy product. Now what we're gonna be doing is checking and adjusting the pH. pH is so important when it comes to formulating skincare products and it's kind of complicating at first. It just seems complicating, but I promise you it's actually really simple. It just sounds like it'll be complicating. But once you sit down and watch my video all about pH, I literally explain everything you need to know and I promise it's so easy once you just sit down and take some notes and watch my video and I promise you'll understand it. It just seems scary and intimidating. But the pH meter I have takes the pH of creams and liquids. This is a pH meter I recommend for everybody. It is like $100, so it is expensive. There are cheaper alternatives, but those won't take the pH of creams. You'll have to dilute them with water. So that's why I recommend investing in the expensive pH meter if you're gonna formulate all the time. Go watch my video all about how to check, adjust, everything pH related if you wanna learn more. But this product's natural pH is right around 4. 0.17, which is perfect. Our skin's natural pH is between 4.5 and 5.5, but since this product has things like gluconolactone, it's naturally gonna have a little bit lower of a pH. So around 4.0 4 to like 4.5 is perfect. Anything below 4.0, I mean, anything between 3.5 to 4.0 should be okay, but just do a patch test to see if it burns your skin and then check the pH later to see if it drifts. Now, if you wanna dye this pink, you can use this water soluble pink coloring. I will link to them down below. They sell them on Wholesale Supplies Plus. And you're gonna to wanna to drop some on a watch glass per first and then get like a little bit of a drop with a pipette because look at how little I added and it made it so pink, even more pink than the Glow Recipe one, which by the way, I do wanna point out to you guys that this product isn't actually pink. It might have a little bit of pinkish to it, but as you can see, it's the bottle that's primarily pink and this product is cloudy. So I don't know when you pour it in like a little container, as you can tell, it's not really pink. It does seem like there might be a pink hint, maybe, I don't know, but I feel like this product isn't really that pink. If it is, it just has like a little tint of pink and in the ingredient description, there's nowhere mentioning that it has coloring in it. So I think the natural coloring it has might be just from the ingredients that are in it. But again, if you wanna make this pink, use a water soluble liquid coloring and there you go, you'll make it pink. But I personally don't really like using colorings on products that are leave-on products. So that's why I ended up deciding to not add in the pink. So I did actually end up making one that was pink and I added in a few other ingredients. Like the ingredient list on their website mentions sodium oleate. So I tried to add that in, but look at how much of the powder crystallized on the bottom. And this happened when I added in sodium oleates. So just know that like changing anything in this formula, you might get some kind of crystallization from your powders. So I don't recommend adding any new ingredients in this unless you do really small test batches. What's funny is that I actually don't like this Glow Recipe product. I think it's like really oily and it feels greasy on my skin and I instantly wanna wash it off because it also burns my skin. So I find it interesting how popular this is, but then again, a lot of store-bought products just burn my skin and I don't like the texture of. Although I really do like the idea of this product, which is why I bought it to try it out, but I didn't end up liking it. So making it myself is honestly the perfect alternative. And the only thing I would probably change about this product to make it a little bit better is to increase the viscosity for it. I personally don't mind that it literally just feels like water is being applied to my skin, but the fact that it's so watery does make it hard to apply. So increasing the viscosity a little bit with a gelling agent or polymer will make application much easier and also just adds this like nice gliding on the skin. The watermelon glow recipe, it glides on your skin really nicely. So adding a polymer or gelling agent, you'll get that same vibe to your homemade one. But a higher molecular weight hyaluronic acid can increase the viscosity of it and make application easier. So there's a suggestion for you guys. Let me know if you guys decide to try out this recipe yourself. Let me know your thoughts and let me know what product I should do next.
Also, don't forget to go over and check out my Patreon where I post two exclusive videos every single month. So there are a ton of videos you can go over there and binge watch for only $5 a month. And for $10 a month, you can get a small business shout out or maybe you have a YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and shout everybody out. Nature's Farm Girl, thank you so much. Let's blend. Thank you, hempygirl.com, shoplevies.com, or shoplevies.com, Seventh House and Oak on Etsy, at Black Petal Beauty on Instagram, Owl and Lily on Etsy, zayalamore.com, I hope I said that right, embracebeautyessentials.com, legendarybathandbody.com, at Stardust Bath and Body on Instagram, astariapothecary.com, Revega Cosmetics here on YouTube, naturesmagicllc.com, and exorebb.com. Everybody will be linked down in my description box. Go sign up if you want a shout out or if you just want bonus content. The shout out tier might be full. It's full pretty often because I only have so much space in the description box to link to everybody.